You've just beaten some special interception bosses, and now you've got these shiny new pieces of tier 9 gear with a manufacturer bonus. It's time to find out what all the fuss is about when people discuss the meta in Nikkei and start getting your feet wet with Overload gear. My name is Psyche, and in this volume of my detailed series of guides that I call Commander Bootcamp, I'm gonna brief you on what Overload gear is, how to prioritize them, and how to bring your units to the next level. Welcome to the endgame grind, let's get started. At this point, I'm expecting you to have beaten at least some of the Special Interception bosses to start getting Tier 9 Manufacture Gear, or T9M Gear for short. This is currently the highest grade equipment you can get in the game, and with it comes with a special perk. You can upgrade them to level 5, as you can with other pieces of gear that you've been getting, but once it reaches level 5, and the manufacturer matches the unit you place it on, there will be a third option that says Equipment Modification. Doing so will expand a custom module. These things can only be dropped randomly by fully clearing a special interception boss. They get a higher chance to drop versus gear, but even so, you're not gonna get a whole bunch of these. So be sure that you want to overload a piece of gear before continuing. To put it into perspective, custom modules do not drop from the random tier 9 equipment box. And in the cash shop, it can be purchased from the $55 bundle or the $100 custom box. You might as well just burn your money at this point. So just wait until you can fully clear Special Interception, and you'll start getting these. Let's go through what Overload gear is. Using a custom module will turn the T9M gear into Overload, and you'll notice some changes about it. First, Overload gear cannot be removed from a unit, and I think this is to prevent you from swapping favorable Overload lines with another unit to decrease the amount of farming you have to do. Second, it's gonna restart the gear level back to zero, but don't worry. The stats will still be better than a level 5 T9M piece of gear. Then you'll get 1 to 3 attributes on the bottom there that most people usually call overload lines. The first line is guaranteed while the second and third appear based on chance. These lines are additional buffs applied to your character and depending on who the unit is can be either meh or game changing. You can see the possibility for all 9 stats in the change attributes menu and each with a range of percentages. If a line has a blue percentage number, it means you got a high roll on that stat. If it's also highlighted in black, it means you got the highest possible roll. You'll see two other options appear, one for change attributes and one for reset attributes. This can get a little confusing. By default, you can spend one module to do either. Change attributes will re-roll your three lines of stats. You may get something else or you may get nothing so this could work against you. If you had, say, three lines already that were fairly decent, then I would not re-roll them. Regardless, you can choose whether to retain your old stats or change to the new ones after spending a module. Be very careful here, as the options can be a little ambiguous. Keep means that you want to retain the old stats, while change means you want to get the new ones. You can see that they're conveniently color-coded to their corresponding box, but I certainly made a mistake here a couple times, so hopefully this saves you a few modules. Let's take a look at an example of changing stats. So right here I have Dorothy. She currently only has elemental damage as the only line on this piece of gear, so I think it's a little bad and I can't see any way I can get a worse result. I re-roll it once, but something interesting happens. I get max ammo capacity, and since Dorothy is one of those units that will get negatively impacted by the stat, I don't want that, so I just click on keep, and it retains my old elemental stat line. So let's try again. And this time around, not only did I get an upgrade of the elemental damage roll, I even got a bonus second line on crit damage. This one I'm definitely keeping. The other button will re-roll the percentages for the lines you already have. You can associate it by the percentage icon. It will reset the numbers, but not the stats themselves. This is useful if you already have favorable stats, but maybe you low-rolled on the percentage ranges. Let's take a look at an example. In this case, I have Snow White. I want to reset the attributes as I already have three decent lines that are good for my build, but I happen to low-roll on the percentages. So I spend a module, and I choose to change to the new ones since the new rolls for elemental damage and crit are better, and one of them even got the highest possible stat. So in this case, this roll was a good improvement. But just be warned, this can obviously work against you. You can land on a lower percentage, so just don't be greedy. 
For the overload enthusiasts, you do have the option to lock a certain line, but doing so will cost you two custom modules. This will prevent a line from being modified, but something the game doesn't tell you is that if you lock a line, every time you change or reset attributes, it's gonna cost you two modules instead of just one. And if you have two lines locked, then each roll will cost three. That's pretty huge, and it's not something the game will openly warn you about. If you're either a free-to-play or low spender, I generally would not lock lines unless you got like a god roll. Now theoretically speaking, the best overload setup will be three favorable stats that are all highlighted in black. But unless you spend an obscene amount of time or money, that's just not gonna be doable. Because of how generous the game is, you'll be getting new units left and right, and I'd rather build up two units to a decent amount to play with both versus only one that's better. But hey, it's a waifu collection sim, so if you want to blow all your modules on your favorite, go right ahead. General rule for me, if a stat roll is mostly favorable, then it's good enough. You can easily do raid content and campaign bosses with decent overload gear. You don't need to min-max to the point of breaking your sanity or bank account. Now onto the second part of the guide. Who should you put overload gear on? Technically, anyone can use them, as overload gear, at the very least, even if you ignore all the lines, is still a stat increase. So it's hard to argue having it will harm a unit in any way. However, a general rule of thumb is that certain characters benefit more from having them. Most of the times, it's gonna be DPS units, or units that are expected to do damage. If you take a look at all the possible stats you can get, most of them will be offensively oriented. You don't see stuff like healing bonus or max HP. In the game, there is a category of characters that the community considers that will only become good or fully built when you get overload gear on them. It's not exactly something that's intuitive, but I can give you what I know about them. A character like Alice is a prime example of this. The reason why you need overload gear in order for her to feel complete is that she really wants 100% charge speed. And the only way you can get there is if you heavily invest into leveling her skills as well as having one or two lines of charge speed. Another example of this will be Scarlet. Because by default of a low ammo count and long reload time, having max ammo overload lines in combination with the right cube will make Scarlet way better. While both her and Alice are perfectly usable without overload, their full potential becomes unlocked when you do. This is a little bit different from a DPS like Red Hood. Yes, she will become stronger if you get overload gear, but the change is more linear. She's already so powerful that any further upgrades is like a win more option. There's a page on Nikkei.gg where there's an entire list of who to prioritize the overload gear on, so you can go there and check if you have some of the high priority ones. This is also the site I use to reference some of my skill leveling priorities, though there may be some deviations in my videos. Let's take a look at Scarlet for example. On this chart, it will say that she wants 4 lines of max ammo. So on each of your 4 pieces of gear, you will try to fish for that stat. If you scroll down on the article, you can even see some general recommended lines for each weapon type. It's worth remembering that there's gonna be nuance in everything. I'll kinda go through each of the 9 stats to give my info on them. Starting with hit rate, it's best on shotguns to group the pallets, good on AR users as they do have some accuracy problems by default, and most useless on snipers and rocket launchers, because snipers already have pinpoint accuracy, and it doesn't make sense to make an explosion more accurate. Max ammo count is a tricky one. Technically, it's a net positive for all weapon types, but as we discussed in some of my guides like Privati, it will harm certain units, so be careful locking this in on anyone. Attack, probably the most universal stat here. Pretty much every weapon type benefits from this due to how damage is calculated in the game. It's a pretty safe bet that having a couple lines of this will help you out. Charge speed and damage. Here's the thing. If you ever got a simulation room buff that buffs one of these stats, you'll always see that they benefit snipers and rocket launchers. This is because these are the only weapon types that benefit from charge speed and damage. You still get a bar that fills up when you control a minigun character, but these stats do not affect that at all. Though it would be pretty cool if it did. So these stats are useless on all other weapon types. Again, there's gonna be nuances in everything. There are a select few units that temporarily change their weapon type like Snow White, who still benefits from them even though she's an AR user by default. Crit rate and damage. Despite what you think, crit is just not that good in this game. You can get it, but if more valuable stats are available, just get those instead. 
Of course, it's not always useless, since someone like Snow White, who has a single hit nuke where the damage is so large that critting will actually lead to a fairly big improvement. Defense. Just like in Genshin Impact, defense sucks here too. I'm just kidding. Probably. It's okay on taunt units like Noise, who's expected to take a lot of damage, so this will help you die slower. But most of the time, we can do better than this. I saved this one for last as the nuances with elemental damage gets a bit complicated. The more I played endgame raid content, the more I started to appreciate this stat. The reason I will mostly put this in the situational tier in my guides is because I don't know if people watching will want to focus on raid content. If your goal is to deal as much damage as possible in 3 minutes, having the right element is going to make a difference. Meaning this stat is either really good for you, or kind of useless. If you want to get into raids, then elemental damage is still a good roll. But if you're content with non-raids, then not so much. After all, this stat is only useful one-sixth of the time. I'm gonna get more into this when we talk about raids, so I will elaborate more then. Alright, so that's all you need to know regarding overload gear. If you got this far, you're well on your way to becoming an elite commander. And the late game discussions online are gonna make a whole lot more sense. Nikkei really opens up when you unlock overload equipment, but just make sure that you know all there is about how re-rolling and locking stats work. In the end, it's not really about how many custom modules you have, but how many you can retain. Make the right calls, and be extra sure when you spend them. Thank you for tuning in. Next time, we will be ending Commander Bootcamp for now with a review on unions and solo raids. Appreciate you being here as usual, and always remember, have fun with the game.